Ahoy Rovers! Well, this week we're going to build and fit a bulkhead from start to finish. My name's Alan Mulholland, and this is the story of how I built the Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now, I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Well, there are basically three steps to building and fitting a bulkhead. Now, the first one is you need to mark where that bulkhead will go. You need a plumb line etched onto the side of the boat. And I did that in a previous video. And number two, you need to build a template. And I'll be showing you that pretty quickly. And then you use that template to lay it out on some plywood and cut the plywood to shape and then tack the plywood in place with some glue. Anyway, there's a lot to do. Time to crack on. The first things I have to do is sort out the deck stringer here, or the shear stringer. So um, it needs to be flattened out because as you can see here, it's touching the inside edge, but there's a great big gap here of about 3 16 of an inch. So I've got to take down the inside edge 3 16 of an inch so that my uh, plywood, when I deck over this area, will sit flat on this stringer. I've already done it uh, just for the first six inches here. It's pretty easy to work. Uh, you can either use a rasp or a block plane. Uh, the nice thing about pine is it's very soft and really easy to work. So that's the, that's the first job. So now that I've planed it back a bit, we can see we're looking pretty good. You know, we'll get a nice little glue joint and that'll fill that just nicely. It's very, very close. It's about as close as you need to get it. Okay, so we're, we're just about to uh, make a template for what is the first bulkhead here. So, or the first bulkhead aft. And it's in three parts. So there's one that goes from the top of the stringer. The top of it supports the deck. It comes down right here, and then there's longitudinals, and so it, it's really this piece. There's one on the port and starboard side, as I said, and there's also uh, another piece in the middle and top, so it, it, multiple pieces. So we're going to make a template for this side, and it should be identical to the other side. And what I've done is I've pulled apart my uh, previous template that I used on bulkhead 7 up forward. And I'll just reuse, I'll reuse these bits. So, let's see, I've trimmed one. I need one that's a little bit smaller. Too small. Right, here it is. So, this is the first one I'll fit. So it doesn't have to be right to the chine, it just has to be approximate. And I have it up to the bottom of the stringer. And it's looking pretty good. I just need to take off a few high points. So right here. Right here. And maybe, maybe here here and here. So to do that you can use a sander or uh, just a block plane.
Okay, that is looking really, really good. Okay, so we're happy with that piece. Now I've got to find a piece for here. And let's see, something like that might just work fine. I just need to trim off a couple of angles here. I'll grab my bevel. So up here, I want to be making an angle kind of like that. In this case, we'll just use the grip stuff and just, just brace it against your body. Uh, you can take it outside to a sawhorse if you're not comfortable doing this. Okay, that'll work. And We'll need to do something on the bottom as well. Okay. That looks pretty good. I need to just round this edge over for the take account for the uh, the radius. That's looking pretty good, and I just need to take a little bit off here for the radius as well. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Actually, it's really nice. It's a nice flat section here. So we have the first piece. Right, so there, there, and then I'll make one for the bottom. Okay, so I can do that right now. If I do that, we're fine. So I'll just glue those just like that. And we're good. So I have a little glue gun here. And I'll just put a dab on there. There we go. Hold this in position. Hold this. Now we'll take our initial piece.
the whole thing all in one. Okay. Open the pencil. The only reason I'm marking this with a pencil is so I know where to put the glue. Okay, so there we go. Put it down the glue. So it's nice to have three hands for something like this. Good. And then the final piece is leftover leftover from our previous bulkhead. I have uh, this piece that I had notched for the top and we can just use it again. Just need to find out where the top is. Okay, we're looking pretty good in all respects. We're on our line and Little dab of glue there. Nice. Now I will just put a little brace across here just to keep everything honest. Don't know if you can hear that outside, but that's a snow plow working. Uh, we got hit with about two feet of snow just a few days ago, and uh, they're still cleaning up the mess. An amazing job that the plow drivers do opening up the province after it dumped that big as fast as they have. All right, so I'm all glued up here. I'm just going to grab a little clamp and put it on here. I don't want to waste any more glue. It's not necessary here as well. Okay, uh, we have a template made now. What I know is I have to um, come up 90 degrees from the bottom to a point that is uh, at least as tall as this piece and then we'll have a camber. Uh, so I realize finding the height of this bulkhead is, is really a pretty easy thing to do because I have this template that I made for the deck camber and uh, you would have seen me use that previously to to get the transom stringer cut. Now I can just do the same thing. So I know it's a measurement from this line that runs parallel to the center line straight up plumb to this camber. So it's, a, it's an easy measurement to take. Just uh, line it up so your tape measure is going plumb. It reads 41 and a half inches, so as long as I make this bulkhead say 42 inches, I know I'll have enough that I can mark this camber on and get it nice and accurate. All right, 42 inches it is. At which point I want to mark this parallel line and then write 42 inches up. And at the same time, while I have the pencil out, I'll mark the center of this radius. Mark it with an R. Same down here. With an R. So I know. And up here. Okay. I have all my marks. I can now take this off and test it on the other side. Okay, here's a close look at this template. So this is the line that it's on. And you can just make out the dotted line. That's a plumb line that I want the bulkhead to be secured to. And let's see if we can see how tight the fit is. So that's, that's reasonably good. I'll make a, a few annotations that that's a radius, you know, and, and that I've got about a sixteenth uh, 16th gap of an inch there and that's fine actually that's what we want so we can get glue inside and yeah pretty 
pretty nice. I'll make an annotation that the where exactly the center of the radius is. But overall, a nice tight fit. Well, when you get two feet of snow, where do you put it all? Well, being on Canada's smallest province, we have to think vertically. So we'll be gluing our bulkhead in along this dotted line right here. But before we can do that, we want to make sure that this surface, which I've already given two coats of S1 epoxy, we're going to key it, um, just lightly sand it, four inches either side because the fiberglass tape goes out it's six inches so three inches either side and we'll have an inch to spare so I'll be using 60 grit uh, uh, sandpaper on my orbital sander to do the keying and it's already pretty rough I mean we I'd probably be pretty safe but I'll just be a little bit safer by giving it a quick going over and we'll also be doing the same over the biaxle and of course the fiberglass that's on the floor so to give myself a guide I'm just going to take a little block which I've cut to four inches and just guide it down along the line. The whole idea behind this is I just don't want to sand more area than I need uh, at this point. Well, I've now sanded off or made a keyway all the way around for the bulkheads here. And at the same time, I've wiped it down with some alcohol. And while that's drying, I'll head out now and start cutting the bulkheads to the shape. So all we really need to do is get an appropriate piece of plywood and then take our template that we built and place it on and make sure that um, for me, the bottom piece is square to the side, so I'm going to just line up the bottom and make sure I have enough room here. You know, I, we don't want to waste this ply, so I can just get that curve in. And I have about, oh, five sixteenths to three eighths of an inch left over, and that'll be enough to get my plumb line. So now it's just a matter of tracing this out. And then, then we just cut it with the saw. Okay, so here's our the first half of our bulkhead. And I'll just zoom in here and see if we can get a, a look at the fit. That is very, very nice. Very nice. We'll have no problem fitting this. Now, there is an issue with this. And that is that the piece of ply itself has a warp to it. And you can see that down on the bottom here, we're on our line. And at the top, we're on our line. But in the center bit here, we're off by about a quarter inch. Now, I can go to the far side of this sheet. Let me see if I can do it while holding the camera. And I can press that sheet out and bring it to its line. Uh, so I'll try to wedge something in there to accomplish that. Apart from that, it's a pretty nice fit. Uh, there's one further step left to do, and that is, uh, so the line right here, that's where this bulkhead should end. I've deliberately left it a bit long because I want to ensure that I have a nice plumb line on this. And uh, this sheet in particular, Although I paid full price for it, it it's all damaged. Uh, this is actually the machine edge of it here, and it was damaged. There was a couple of crack bits on uh, on the sheet. I've had to cut them out. So um, that's another reason I left it long. I can get a nice straight line with the saw. Anyway, I'll set up the level, and we'll get that plumb line, and then we'll take it back out and cut it. So again, just with the little laser level here, and at first I said, well, just borrow one, but I've used it so much, it's really worth your while to uh, buy one. They're not that expensive. And boy, does it make working with all these curves so easy. So you can see the plumb line now, so I just need to mark that with my pencil.
There we go. Now I can take that out to the saw, cut it, and this half is done. So this piece, uh, this is the second half of the bulkhead, and it's a nice fit as well. So now we're going to do the same procedure. We're going to just set up a plumb line and mark that off. This sheet actually has the added advantage of not having a warp in it, so it's nice and square. Okay, there we go. The bulkheads are in. They've been straightened. They're on their plumb lines. I have them secured. Uh, both with clamps and with my lead weights down here which are holding them in place. Now I'm just going to mix up a little bit of uh, thickened epoxy and I'll just tack these in place and let them set up overnight. There we have it. We have now tacked this in place. Again, I mixed up way too much, probably twice as much as I needed. It only needs a little bit to hold it in place. We'll come back at a later date. We'll uh, get a proper fillet in here and fiberglass these uh, with six inch tape. Well, it's the next day and the bulkheads are absolutely tacked and secure in place. So now I can um, do a great big fillet on these and you can see I can, you know, move this edge. It's unsecured, but these edges uh, are nice and firm so I can press in now and do a nice fillet all the way around and then put my uh, fiberglass tape over top of it. But I think I'll have to leave this as it is for a few days. I have to switch gears. Well, it's an honor to add two new names to the Benefactor's bulkhead. Richard Waring and Jeff Kornblatt. So what is a Benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. So you can see that it really didn't take that long to build and fit the bulkhead and that's, that's because we kept the design really simple for the 650 and simple in the sense that I want this to empower backyard builders to be able to build their own boat. Now, next week, I'm going to be changing gears because we have temperatures. I mean, right now I have a temperature of about almost zero degrees and tomorrow's supposed to be getting to one degree. So I'm going to use those temperatures to my advantage. Believe it or not, those are the warmest temperatures we've had probably in about two months. And with those warm temperatures, I'm going to be installing these massive white oak beams to secure to secure the bilge keels. Uh, I say massive and you might be laughing at that but everything is relative to the size of the boat and the 650 well she's only 6.5 meters 21 feet in length so relatively this is a big piece of oak. Anyway rovers until next time thanks for watching. Well Mr. Speckles and I would like to take a moment to thank all the Wave Rover patrons whose pledges of support help power the Wave Rover project. 
Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. Brilliant.